and welcome to Game Guru Classic and Game Guru Max broadcast number 137. Welcome everyone who's joining us live in the live chat. This is your opportunity to ask some questions if you like, and I will provide some answers a little bit later. We divide this broadcast up into a couple of sections. The first part is demos, if we have any to show. And then the second part, we do a Q&A where we go through in chronological order your questions and answer as many of them as we can. All I ask is that you stick a question mark at the end in the live chat so I can skim through them a little quicker, get through a few more questions and hopefully answer them all. In our allocated time, we try and keep these broadcasts to 30 minutes or less so uh, Lee doesn't bore you to tears uh, too much. Uh, we'll start off with demos of Game Guru Classic. Nothing new in the repositories since last week. Uh, however, there has been a change in the uh, the promotions. I had a quick look on Steam. And if you go to Game Guru Classic and you look down a little bit, we're currently running a 70% on the starter bundle, which is it was a bundle we created many, many years ago. And we think it's pretty good value in the sense that it would just start you off with the Game Maker and a couple of the early DLCs. Um, as, as it says in the name, it just starts you off with just a, a few assets. I say a few assets. The Game Guru Classic uh, core product and the free expansion pack actually numbers thousands of assets for you to make games with. It's just we throw in a couple of extra DLCs as well for the starter bundle. You will have no shortage of assets to play with if you start your game making activities with Game Guru Classic. And I just wanted to point that out in case anyone was looking for a bargain. But I imagine many of you are tuning in for the news of the week, which of course is Game Guru Max. Okay, Game Guru Max demo. Beyond here be demos and dragons. Mostly demo. <laughs> so I'm going to go straight into Game Guru Max. This is what I've been working on right now. Specifically, weapon hotkeys. Now if you've tuned into previous broadcasts you'll have watched me work on the um, RPG mechanics, the inventories, slots, dragging items around etc. And at some point that needed to be blended with the weapon system because you can collect weapons, you can drop weapons, you can use weapons and the two things had to marry together and that's what the work has been in the last seven days to bring those two universes closer together. And I'm going to do a little demonstration of where we are so far. This is a level I created, new level. So we've left the dungeon, <laughs> we've left the dark, and we've entered the light. Simple table, two weapons, and our pot. I'm just going to run this. Uh, hopefully you can still hear me over the wind of our mountain scene. This was completely procedurally generated in about, well, I think it was three button clicks. Instant, massive terrain for you to play with and I stuck a table down so I could start my little experiments. So anyone familiar with the, the stock weapons that you get with Game Guru Max we've got you a couple of weapons including a sledgehammer so I'll pick up the sledgehammer and I'll pick up the the AK or the AK equivalent I should say and you'll notice right at the top and um, this is a new UI layout I've started from uh, with a fresh project and I just dropped in what's called a hotkeys panel which is the one at the top and you can see right away the first item I selected was the um, the sledgehammer and the second one was the AK equivalent and it found the appropriate slots before today or rather before the last couple of days it was all done in the background and invisibly uh, unless you specify preferences the first weapon you selected will go into slot one the second will go into slot two so on and so forth now we can visualize that when you drop in a hotkeys panel. You don't have to have it in your in-game HUD, um, you can just have it in your inventory or another HUD screen, but I wanted to be able to have my um, my hotkeys panel in both the in-game and in the inventory, which I'll show you uh, very, very shortly. So as you can imagine, if I press 1, it's the sledgehammer, if I press 2, and I can bounce back between the two. I think it also might be nice if I highlighted um, a little bit of a highlight of which weapon you selected at the top. I know it's obvious when you've got a great big sledgehammer uh, taking up 25% of the screen you don't really need to highlight a tiny little icon there. 
but there may be weapons that are in the future that are very similar and you want to be able to highlight which one you know laser rifle with extra robot damage and then an identical laser rifle with sort of extra force damage who knows just to give you an idea of what i'm thinking but what i want to show now is if i pick this one it's just an object that's a collectible and i go into the inventory you can see that's added here now you'll notice right away when i collected the sledgehammer and the rifle it immediately went to the hotkeys that's a deliberate choice um, on, on our part because it's getting closer to the existing weapon system and how it's currently working. And you can adult, I mean, it was implemented that you pick up the sledgehammer and then you have to manually drag it into slot one and then you can use it. But that's breaking existing functionality and anyone who's used to that doesn't want it breaking. So any weapons that are selected, traditional weapons, as you understand them, go straight into the hotkeys panel. And uh, there's lots of other things that still need to be coded in for all that to work smoothly, but you can see, I think that's a better option. So if I select this, which I've just collected, that pot, it doesn't look like the pot, but believe me, that's the collectible, and I drag it into the third slot and come back out here, you'll actually see I can still choose between the weapons, which are in slot one and slot two, but in the third slot, where I've added a consumable, if I press three, that health, mana or extra shield strength etc consumable I've used it and now slot 3 is available again so if I ran around a bit more of my level and picked up a third weapon because the third slot is available it would go in there one other thing I'd like to show before we move on to uh, Q&A is the ability to move these around as well back in uh, the good old days like last week the weapon system kind of fixed the positions of where the weapons were in your slots but you can change that now this is key one and key two i can move this to four so now four operates this gun i can move that to five now five operates it i can move that to eight and eight will operate it as you would imagine at rpg style games do this a lot being able to reconfigure what your hockey zone your keyboard as you get better and better weapons and better and better abilities. But we're starting our life off with the existing weapon system because that has to work with the inventory and the hotkeys panel. And uh, what we're working on right, right now is being able to have say 20 weapons in your level and mix and match and move around. So moving a weapon from the hotkey to the main inventory, uh, a weapons that are stored in the main inventory, into the hot and moving them backwards and forwards having third and and other containers you can imagine containers for treasure chests containers that shopkeepers have containers that are dropped by some massive end of level boss spider and being able to oh there's a weapon there and grab that from its container and drag it into your main inventory or your hotkeys you get the idea so making sure that's super robust and by the time it's finished and it's super ready um, and the old weapon system works great with the new container system a lot of the mechanics will be in place for all of the non shooter weapons the the weapons you would expect from a more traditional uh, PG genre and then we can basically just add some extra graphics in a little bit of uh, eye candy and suddenly you've got trading suddenly you've got shopkeepers and suddenly you've got big loot drops from um, characters or, or beasts that you may have killed in your level so that's where we are right now i hope that was a little bit informative of what's going on but i'm going to switch back into game guru max i'm going to find my live chat hiding around here i'm going to drag it in to the screen you can see scrolly to the toppy and uh, <laughs> i forgot this last week i'm not going to do it now because this is the formal introduction to the q and a <laughs> there you go, a little bit of ceremony for you. Now we can officially answer questions. So I'm going to start at the top, look for a question mark, and go all the way down. Just as a bit of a glance, lots of questions, great. Well, I can answer to them. Just doing a time check, we're 10 minutes in. So we spent about best part of 10 minutes doing some demos. So if we do 10 minutes of answers, that will keep this broadcast nice and snappy. But don't be afraid to ask more questions. I'm here until YouTube kicks me out. So the first question is coming from Duke229. Could you please make it that pressing B 
enables snap mode in Game Guru Max. Uh, have we taken it out? Uh, the request for B, I think that was around back in the day, wasn't it, with Game Guru Classic? So if we removed it, we probably haven't removed it, but just changed the key shortcut. I think we might have changed it to a G or an S. Um, there is a, there's a key shortcuts on the right. Um, check that out, see if we've just changed it from a B to another letter. As to can you change the entire software to use B instead of what the designers required Game Guru Max to use now, that's a bigger question. Um, I don't think we'll be able to customise editor keys for version 1 because that opens a big can of worms. There's a lot of keyboard shortcuts in Game Guru's front end editors and uh, having that customizable that's probably a bridge too far. That's going into the realms of letting you add plugins into the editor itself which we're not able to do right now. Casper uh, asks, can you set an option to turn off terrain in empty map? Yeah, there's been a few requests for that. Uh, just to go into a bit more detail, when you generate a new level and you're in the terrain generator, there's one of the biomes called empty. It's not really empty, that uh, grid flat floor is actually a terrain and you can modify it and make hills and gullies etc. The request here is can we just get rid of it altogether and leave you in a void? Which means, of course, if you just drop a start marker in the middle of it and press test level, you fall to your doom. You don't actually hit anything, you just keep falling. <laughs> I suppose this request is if you're doing your own entity, static entities, like a spacecraft or a space station or something like that, and you don't need the extra burden and performance hit of a whole terrain system. I think we do have commands in a script to switch on and off terrain. Check those out in the global.lua inside the script bank. Try them out. If they don't work, it's a bug. And if it's a bug, please report it in the issues board. We'll make sure that works. Once you've got script commands, then it's super, super, super easy to create a behavior around that and have the ability to switch the terrain on and off at your leisure. Not just the empty level flat terrain, but any terrain. Um, it may even save some memory too. There's quite a lot going on in terms of physics and uh, dynamic generation of all that geometry. And you could save yourself a lot of memory and a lot of performance if you actually don't need the train. Okay, question, question. There's a question mark. Okay, no content says, I demand to make a normal weapon import function. Exclamation mark. This is one of the important FPS features. Exclamation mark. Why else would I buy this? Question mark. Return the money, exclamation mark. The question is, why else would I buy this? Well, we have a lot of information right now in Game Guru Max Land. 136 broadcasts and counting, plus a lot of tutorials and other coverage, including our end of month video. I think that's plenty of information and content to decide whether Game Guru Max is for you. It's entirely and always has been your choice how you spend your cash. <laughs> if you don't like Game Guru Max, that's fine. It's absolutely not for everyone, and guarantee you that. Here's a question. Uh, will it be possible to add a minimap? Yeah, that's one of the next things to be done. Once all the container logic's been done, and the player skills, because we kind of already started that, so we'll finish it, the very next thing is what's called map view. And map view is like another HUD screen where you can have a big map and you can see where you were and all the objectives, enemies and things like that. And because it's a HUD, you see the previous broadcast, a HUD is super flexible. You can actually have a map and all the gadgets and the controlly things of the map on your in-game HUD, the, the, the HUD you see all the time. You can actually have it there. You want to call it a mini-map, that's fine. But uh, it's something that you get to control. It's gadgets you get to place customize, get it just the way you want for your game, you have a mini-map. So I'm looking forward to maybe demonstrating that once we're on the map view system, which isn't too far away. So I'm looking forward to including that, say, in the next two to three week broadcasts. Another question from Duke229. Transparent entities are not rendered by planar reflections. Why is that? Um, thinking quickly, it... Initially, I was going to say it's a performance reason and we're saving you some FPS, but it may not, I think it might be a little bit more complicated than that. I know Planar Reflections has a very specific mode, and in that mode, it chooses 
um, all of the objects it needs to render under some certain rules. Maybe one of those rules is that it can't do planar reflections and transparencies at the same, same time. That would be the sort of very hard to fix um, problem. It could also be, um, by default, we just switch those transparent things off for performance, as I originally mentioned. Why? Well, when you render a reflection, what you are reflecting has to be rendered. It has to be rendered a lot. In fact, every cycle, because the camera keeps moving. And rendered a lot, a lot, if you're in VR. And uh, when you do transparent objects, they render in a different order, front to, book versus front to back versus back to front. And of, of course, all that needs sorting as well. And it could simply have been, let's get some more performance. Da, 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 da. This is tr not as apparent if your transparent entities are quite faint and you don't really notice. But uh, if you're creating your own entities, your own objects, you may be using a transparent flag, but most of that object is a solid opaque. And so you definitely notice it disappear in your reflection. If it turns out that's something that was our decision, just to save on performance, stick it in the issues board as a, why can't we have that choice? Don't make that choice for us. I want transparent objects in my reflections and I'll take the performance hit. Um, if that is indeed the case, stick it in on the issues board and uh, we'll put it down as a feature request. If it's a quick one, it might even end up in version one. If not, it'll probably be after. Sabinescence, hello Sabinescence, uh, asks, uh, what would you like to see added to Game Guru Classic? Anything, anything you steal from you, dude. <laughs> uh, I've seen your projects in the past, amazing work. Uh, if there's something that can be lifted easily from your private source code repository and cleanly dropped into the uh, Classic repo, um, more than happy to see it, do a bit of a validation check on it, merge it into the latest master, and make it part of a future Game Guru Classic update. And I will absolutely feature it in our broadcasts. And that's what it's all about. Right now, as you've probably seen in the last couple of broadcasts, I've just been pointing at uh, the discounts and the promotions because there wasn't really a lot of activity recently going on in uh, Game Guru Classic land. Um, but there's no shortage of feature requests. If you go check out the uh, the social feeds, there's still a lot of people, in fact, more people in Game Guru Classic Land screaming for features. So maybe pick one of the low hanging fruit items. A little goes a long way. Um, but if you're still st stuck for ideas, yeah, give me a shout by email and we'll um, we'll discuss it and see what um, a few little tweaks could please a lot of people. Uh, another question right beneath this from Charlene is the uh, biggest map in Game Guru Max 25 kilometer squared. What's a good question? Let's find out. So I'm going to be cheeky, add a new level, which is this. I'm going to click it. And if we look here, editable area size can go all the way up to five kilometers. That's as big as it gets, I'm afraid. So not 25 kilometers, but five kilometers. Uh, um, is it five kilometers? Yeah, it's five kilometers wide and five kilometers in the other axis as well. But that's still pretty big. Um, let me know if you managed to create an FPM level where you filled up all five kilometers squared. I'd like to see that level. <laughs> Let's see how big it is. And how long it took, that would be another nice stat. Um, but yeah, we'll see if people want anything bigger than five kilometers and we'll go from there. Uh, I Love Clint asks, can the weapon hood be customized? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, the ammo and the weapons and all of the accoutrements around that, as you've seen the HUD editor in previous broadcasts, you can actually edit a lot of those graphics. The graphics themselves come from the weapon, which came from the weapons artist. So those are fixed. You can go into those folders and change those icons, basically cut and paste and modify a weapon and make it your weapon. If you want full customizability, that's not super difficult, but it, that's not out of the box. You'd have to go in and to investigate some files for full customization. But certainly where the HUDs are, the layouts, the surrounds, of them, how the fonts appear and the colours and the sizes and the 
and the adornments, yeah, you can customise all that. No problem. Here's a question from Tom. Can we have that as an tick box option to, to auto place weapons? Uh, a tick box option to auto place weapons. Auto place weapons. So, uh, do you mean that when you're in the level creation, the terrain generator, and there's another tick box on the right somewhere here? Auto populate trees, auto populate vegetation, auto populate weapons. I'd be interested to hear, probably not in this Q&A, but generally, how much do you want this terrain generator to, to, to make your game for you? I think auto populating it with every weapon you've got in your library might be a little bit random. In the past I have done game makers with the magic make game button, but I found that the games that were automatically produced were a bit too random. Like, so random they weren't actually enjoyable to play. So we have to be very careful how we expand this area. Trees and vegetation are naturally random, which is why it works very well to have those tick boxes. Whereas things like buildings and human created stuff, including weapons, a bit more care and attention needs to be um, um, spent <laughs> on how those things are placed in your level. Otherwise, it's just a random hodgepodge of objects that are pulled from the library. Interesting, but you probably get bored of them after about 10 seconds or two minutes. Here's a question from Duke229. Will there be more ambient occlusion methods added to Game Guru Max? Current one is not functioning properly in indoor levels. Ambient occlusion methods. Ambient occlusion methods. Ambient occlusion in respect to um, texturing. That's, I think, done as a screen space ambient occlusion effect. And there are a couple that to choose from, from um, uh, the Wicked Engine version that we've got. I think we picked the best one, which was HB. I think it was HBAO or something of that ilk. All the other ones were just of a lesser order. If you think it's not functioning properly, as in it's a bug, please stick it in the issues board and uh, maybe send me an email so you can just remind me what I said today in this broadcast. But I don't think uh, anything that's currently available to us is any better than the one that we've currently chosen. And if it's just, it could be better, or there are better ambient occlusion techniques out there, then I'll grant you that. Yeah, but with the, for version one, there's no plans to actually rewrite or add to uh, the ambient occlusion techniques. Um, and if it is really getting in on your nerves, you can switch it off. <laughs> or dial it back at the very best. Uh, Happy Panda asks, will you allow easy download for Ubuntu? Yeah, there was another question on the uh, on the on the YouTube video that we posted on the is it the first today? Yeah, we posted it earlier today. There's no plans to do cross-platform Game Guru Max at this time. We're only focusing on Windows, uh, supporting DirectX, and it's Windows 10 and above. So that's a target. Very small team, so we have to choose our battles carefully. And it would take us a year to write a Linux version of Gengar Max, and then it would probably take longer for every other pl platform suggested. So yeah, um, sorry if you've been following along to Game Guru Max thinking, I'll just wait for the Linux version. There's no plans to write a Linux version of Game Guru Max. Um, so uh, yeah, you might want to go and have a look at other game makers out there, uh, supported for lin Linux support, and do something similar to what Game Guru Max is doing, which is letting you easily create 3D games. I've not seen any, I'd like to recommend a few, but I've not been in the Linux community for a while, so I'm a bit out of date in that score. Uh, here's another question right underneath, and what about the moving site? Uh, moving site, moving site. I'm going to make an educated guess that you mean gun site, um, moving about. So, uh, typically the reticule is in the centre of the screen when you're moving around with a weapon and the gun sight is placed in the middle so you can actually move the ca whole camera and then have somewhere to shoot and where you've got your little crosser that's exactly where your bullet would end up. And if that's not the answer, another answer is moving sight as in you can freeze the screen and actually have the sight move around the screen instead of being in the centre. Well, if you look at when you press the I key in inventory and that cursor moves around separate, that ability already exists. All you've got to do is create a HUD screen and then uh, specify a cursor that you want. And then when you press a particular key, 
then it frees that cursor and you can move it around. I'm sure there's uh, those both those answers are wrong, so you probably need to uh, expand on the question. More details, the merrier. Another question from Tom: uh, Does item in hotkey still take up an inventory spot? If not, can we have that as another toolbox option if we would like hotkey items to take a spot in the inventory? Think of the hotkey panel as another inventory. So you've got your main inventory, which is all of the stuff in your pocket that you don't see. The hotkey panel is like another inventory you have, uh, which is like quicker to get to. It's like, imagine you had a gun vest and you got like some little pockets and you can get at those quicker than if you got into your backpack and you had to open it and root around to find what you wanted. So think of the hot key panel as a smaller, more readily accessible inventory panel. But it's just another container and uh, we maybe have more containers. All our um, containers used in different ways. Uh, but that's how it currently works. Every slot that you see in the inventory is a genuine slot that you can put an object into that. If you've selected it, uh, marked it as a collectible, you can put it in that slot. Um, another question, uh, why are animated decals not working in Game Guru Max, like snow and rain boxes from Game Guru Classic? Animated decals, if you pull an animated decal from Classic and drop it into Max and expect it to work, um, it probably won't work. If you're talking about an animated decal that we've provided during the development of Game Guru Max and it's not working, that's a bug. And uh, please let us know in the issues board and we will fix it up. There's a lot of stuff, I mean Game Guru Classic has been going for seven years and counting, and there's a lot of assets over the years that have been created for Classic. Everything that you find in the Game Guru Classic universe is not automatically auto-compatible with Game Guru Max because we've changed quite a lot. A huge amount, in fact, um, so far in Game Guru Max development. And so there's no longer a guarantee of 100% forwards compatibility with stuff that was created in Classic. So you kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt and your mileage definitely will vary. Another question from Isle of Clint. Can you create events from uh, flowcharts for RPG game making? Uh, I, probably the answer to that is no. If you have a flowchart event editor, and you want to then drag it into Game Guru Max? No, uh, the format's probably wrong. Game Guru Max won't know what it is, <laughs> and it just flat out won't work. Um, you could certainly use flowcharts in order to design your logic for your RPG game, but then you'd have to transfer that theoretical design into practicable level editing and choosing behaviors and setting properties, and you get the idea. But no, there's no cross-compatibility with flowchart software at this time and no plans to do that before version one. Gosh, more questions. Thank you very much. Checking the clock with 28 minutes. So we're very close to breaching the 30 minute mark, which I don't really want to do. So thank you very much for all your questions. I know we'd like to stick around a bit longer, but I'm going to pick questions from two people who haven't asked me a question before. And I think that will be, keep flying down the questions, and I will go back to the top. Yeah, Rainbow hasn't asked me a question before. How can I bring in magic spells like a spell book without coding, or a lot of money investing? Um, quickest way to do a magic spell like a spell book, I suppose, um, ask one of your friend artists to knock you up a simple 3D model and then you can snapshot that model as your 2D and then you can create a collectible and then when you cl collect that 3D object you mark that as the collectible and then when you pick it up it's now showing up in your inventory and then you can attach a behavior to that 3D object so that when you use that spell some effect will happen in your game. Now we are going to provide some behaviors so you don't need to code Behaviors that would allow you to just to change a few properties and then you'll be able to have some in-game effect based on that thing that you've collected. So you can create the object, you can create the, how it looks, the image in your inventory and you can modify the properties of what it does in your game. Maybe it gives you more strength or stamina or reduces your health or it keeps you invincible for 15 seconds. Behaviors like that. You don't, won't need to code to do stuff like that. You'll find it in the behaviors library. And as for investing, maybe if you invest in a couple of uh, tutorials on Blender, you could do all of that yourself. You won't need to spend any more money. So hopefully that was a, 
an initial answer, but it's a it's a question with a lot of answers uh, at the end of it. But that's how I would start if if I was in that situation. And uh, Happy Panda has asked a question before, and forty two pixels is answering. Thanks very much. Looking for a new new person who hasn't asked a question yet. Yikes, there's a lot of questions. Sorry. I guess we could spend an hour. Nomad Soul, I don't think you've asked a question yet. Uh, do you expect to add ray tracing to Max? Not for version one. The rendering engine that you see right now, this is it. Um, and it doesn't use ray tracing. It uses good old fashioned um, forward. No, actually, does it? You know what, it used to be deferred rendering and then I think we switched to forward rendering for some techniques and now I'm wondering whether we've got some weird hybrid but whether it's deferred or part deferred part forward rendering it's a traditional rendering graphics engine. Ray tracing is the next thing. <laughs> it's the one everyone's getting into and it's all super exciting and you don't have to fake reflections anymore and it does it all. It's a massive performance hit and you need some big old juicy monster graphics cards to do justice to lots and lots of game content. But for version 1 of Game Guru Max, no. If you're holding out um, for the ray tracing, you might be waiting some time. It'll probably um, accompany an upgrade to the whole graphics engine. And I suspect that when we get to version 1, we will not be focusing on graphics engines, we'll continue to be focusing on gameplay, fixing bugs, adding small functional additions to existing features to round them off and uh, answer t to the needs of the community, the majority of the community. So yeah, um, ray tracing is definitely an option down the road, but not planned for version 1. And yes, thank you. I uh, Probably there are 20 more questions I could answer, but I am very conscious of the time. And 32 minutes in is probably long enough for a YouTube uh, broadcast. But I will be around next Wednesday. So hold on to your thoughts. And if you want to come back next Wednesday, you can carry on and get your questions in early. I think that's the secret. Join us at 7 p.m. Start asking your questions, even as I'm demonstrating stuff. Start throwing those questions in because I do answer them in chronological order. So that's it from me. I'll have more, more to, on the RPG, a lot more to show on the RPG next week. So I'm looking forward to pulling all that together for you. And until next time, thank you very much for joining us. And I'll speak to you all next week at 7pm GMT. Until then, goodbye.